G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. This time we're gonna do a draft specific video. I have literally just recorded my mock draft, which should be with you sometime this week. I've done the top 30 selections, um, but in today's video, I wanted to focus really on pick one and speculate about who that might be because at this current point in time, like I'm struggling to think of other drafts in recent years where it's been so unclear who's gone pick one, or as soon as we have an idea of who it's gonna be, I see something else that suggests it would be someone else. So I have a prediction in mind, um, but at the moment I can't, put any real stock into it. I'm trying to think over like recent drafts, how many times we have not seen pick one coming. I think Jamara was always gonna happen. I suppose it depended on Adelaide bidding on him. Harley Reid was the most obvious one ever. Whether that pick got traded, I suppose, was the subject of speculation. Jason Horn Francis was kind of obvious. I reckon you have to go back to like Petrarca. In 2014, from my memory, and this is just memory, but I remember hearing on the morning of the draft that the St Kilda were actually gonna pick Paddy McCartan instead of Petrarca, which was the prevailing rumor up until that point. I do remember some doubt around Andy McGrath versus Hugh McCluggage, which would have been 2016. And there was a little bit of a murmur that the Brisbane Lions wouldn't take Cam Rayner, they might go Andy Brayshaw instead. But other than that, my point being is that this draft is shaping up to be a little bit like that. However, that could also be thrown out the door if Richmond trade for North Melbourne's pick two and hold the first two selections. We're probably gonna hear about it a lot earlier. So in this video, I'm gonna discuss a handful of options that could go pick one. Bearing in mind, we probably have narrowed it to about three realistically, maybe four at a push. And I will, to, to pad the video out, I'll, I'll mention some players that have been considered pick one contenders previously, and we'll just talk about who they are as players. Before we get into it, if you are someone who wants to keep up with the draft and see plenty of draft content between now and the actual draft in late November, I'd really appreciate it if you considered subscribing to this channel. More than half the people who watch my channel regularly aren't actually subscribed, so if you're one of those people or you're just discovering me for the first time and want to see more footy content, I'd appreciate it if you consider subscribing, and I'll be covering the draft daily. I've been daily on this channel for about four months now. But anyway, let's crack into it. Should we just start who I, with who I think should be pick one? Richmond will hold this pick. I think Sam Lawler might be the guy who gets called out as the first selection of the 2024 draft. And his story has been interesting. I suppose over the year, he's probably gone from more of a top six to 10 selection and in recent times has really rocketed to that number one selection. So what differentiates Lawler from a lot of the other guys is in recent times, I feel like a lot of the top prospects who go like one, two or three, especially as midfielders, aren't typically your smaller bodied inside midfielders who are a little bit more conventional, they tend to go later. And, and the sexy picks are the athletic picks, the guys with a point of difference, like a Jason Horn Francis and of course a Harley Reid. So this year, the talent pool at the top and some of the, maybe three of the top four talents as it's currently rated are a little bit more of your general inside midfielder, where Sam Lawler is the differentiating factor where he's actually proven his ability to roll forward and genuinely impact as a marking forward. So he's not amazingly tall. He's 187 centimeters, which I think is about the same height as Harley Reid. I only compare him to Harley Reid because Harley is another player who can play forward and play above his height because he's got a strong contested game. So Lawler is a quite a physically developed young kid as well. And uh, it's interesting considering I, I believe he played high level cricket for a while there as well. So there's a suggestion he's got some upside because he hasn't been making AFL his entire focus, which I believe is different to Jagger Smith, who I think finished school a year ago. So from a development perspective, Lawler has considered to have some upside for that. But, you know, he's quite an explosive midfielder as well. I mean, he's got great physicality, great tackler, generally is a ball winning midfielder, but when he goes forward, becomes a great mismatch as well for opposition defenders. He's not super tall, he's obviously a good ground level player, but he can mark above his head, particularly in a contested situation. So you, you do see a lot of comparisons thrown around like Petrarca and Dustin Martin. The, the truth is no two players are actually that similar, but stylistically you can understand what they mean when they say an explosive midfielder who can go forward and impact the game aerially. So I think Lawler, despite the fact that he did a bad hamstring injury towards the end of the year, and I don't know if that's going to affect his ability to test at the combine, but I think he's got all the attributes to be a highly rewarding player. Now, this is even more likely that he goes pick one or two if Richmond hold two selections, because if they can balance this out by going more of your high impact athletic and balance that out with a, like a more conventional inside mid. Now, it could be North Melbourne who hold pick two, but that is not my current prediction. 
We know Richmond are very into Sam Lula, but they're also interested in a handful of other midfielders, which will be interesting to see how this plays out. Let's maybe talk about Finn O'Sullivan next. Now, I don't know if he's the second most likely to go pick one, but I did read from The Age, who have apparently consulted a lot of recruiters. They did a mock ranking, which if you like, I can leave in the description of this video if you want to read it yourself. But they did rankings which were informed by the opinions of recruiters, and they seem to think that other recruiters believe Richmond were considering Lawler or O'Sullivan at pick one. Now, if Richmond hold both picks, they could pick both of these guys and this Jagger Smith to consider, which we'll get to. But it is distinctly possible if Richmond only have one pick, it, they could go Finn O'Sullivan. So he's another genuine contender. Different, again, to Lawler. He's 182 centimeters, doesn't have the same forward line utility. However, he's a very high IQ midfielder. And the thing with O'Sullivan, it's interesting to see his trajectory because he was an outstanding like under-16s player. In 2022, in the under-16s championship, he actually won the award for best player and he was an under 18 all Australian player last year as well. So we did that as a bottom major. So we're talking about a kid who was amazing as a 16 year old, fantastic again as a 17 year old and in his top age year battled through a lot of injuries. So I think that led to some down performances for Finn O'Sullivan. It is always risky picking a guy who had a great bottom age year and didn't perform in his under 18s year. However, it does sound like he was hampered quite a bit with injury this year. So I think it's fair to suggest the fact that Richmond are considering him for pick one, they clearly rate his talent and I'm sure they're not the only ones. Despite a down year in terms of production, he is still considered a very realistic pick one candidate. And that just speaks to the fact that clubs obviously rate his talent and perhaps, you know, they've met him and got a feel for what drives this kid. A lot has been said about him being second cousins with Sam Walsh, but the similarities as players is kind of there. So Finn O'Sullivan is genuinely a contender for pick one. Let's talk about Jagger Smith. He is probably the safest bet. I don't know if there is such a thing. Maybe Levi Ashcroft too, but this guy is considered to have a pretty low floor in terms of potential. So the, the worst case scenario for Jagger is he's still probably going to be a good player, but perhaps he lacks the high ceiling of a Sam Lawler. He's certainly the most prolific of these midfield options. This guy just finds the footy with absolute ease. I think he's recorded at least one 50 possession game. He's very evasive too. When he gets the ball in tight, he always finds a way to get out of trouble. And for quite a small bodied frame, he had a VFL debut where he had 18 contested possessions out of 31 total possessions. So despite being the smallest player in the field, he's still winning the contested footy. He's not a high impact per possession player. You won't find him getting a lot of meters gained or driving the ball inside 50 as often, but he does get from contest to contest. He wins plenty of the footy and he's remarkably consistent. So for him, he needs to beef up a little bit, but like I said, he still wins contested footy against bigger bodies, despite not being physically blessed himself at this current point in time, or at least physically developed, I should say. So is he likely to go pick one? It's possible. Um, Richmond have had some interest there. Like I said, they've been linked to a number of players here. It seems in recent weeks, the trend has gone more Finn O'Sullivan or Sam Lawler to go pick one, but Jagger Smith hasn't fallen away that badly. So I'm thinking safe bet, top three selection, potentially top four, depending on a bid for Levi Ashcroft. So let's talk about him because he could still be pick one. It just might not be to Richmond, right? So Levi is Will's younger brother for anyone who is not aware. And, you know, a similar player stylistically, like ultra professional, high production player. I believe he won't test at the combine because he's still recovering from shoulder surgery. But considering he's a Monty to get to the Brisbane Lions, I don't know if that'll matter too much. So what we're talking about here is what is the chance of Levi Ashcroft being bid on at pick one? Well, it depends if Richmond, first of all, rate him as the best talent, which is conceivable. Cal Toomey has been leaning on that, at least in his second most recent Phantom. I can't remember if he changed it in his other Phantom form guide, but it would be keeping Brisbane honest because they will almost certainly just match a bid wherever it goes. So we'll wait and see. Richmond and Brisbane did a trade. Do they have a good trade relationship there? Is that likely to mean Richmond don't bid on Levi Ashcroft? It's possible, but still genuinely a contender to go P1 in this year's draft. Even if, you know, someone like Will, who was a gun in his year, he got bid on at like P three or something like that. I want pick two. So Richmond might do the same and let him go to pick two or three. Those, to be honest, round out the players that I think are genuinely likely to be pick one. I do think it's narrowed to those four players, but we can add a few other contenders here that are not really contenders, but they're probably in that top bracket of midfielders. Maybe let's start with Josh Smiley. He may not be considered in that top echelon anymore, but at the start of the year, he was considered possibly the favorite to be pick one in this year's draft. 194 centimeter midfielder who I'm pretty sure was tested at 194 centimeters at the end of last year. So we could see him close to that 196 or 197. 
when all the new heights come out, which should be at the combine, which now I think about it, must be right around the corner. However, he didn't have the best top age year this year. I think uh, in the championships, played a bit of midfield and probably didn't show an ability as a forward, which you know might be ideal for a 194 centimeter midfielder. He's not necessarily a good, strong, overhead contested mark. He might actually be more suited to playing off halfback as a bit of a distributor there. I'm reading The Age, who consulted recruiters. They said there was number one hype about him earlier in the year, but a moderate championships display hurt his stock. Some recruiters believe Smiley's best position is at halfback, querying his running ability and impact below his knees, whereas others view him as a big body midfielder who can go forward. So yeah, a couple of different perspectives there on Smiley, and I don't think is a realistic candidate to go pick one. And to be completely honest with you, there is a chance he slides out of the top 10 altogether. But it is also said that Richmond are very bullish on him. So between picks 1, 6, 10, and 11, does he end up at the Tigers? How many of those picks do they hold on draft night? That's another question entirely. I'll discuss Sid Draper here. I think on talent is not far behind some of these guys we've talked about. He is another smaller bodied midfielder compared a little bit to someone like Caleb Sarong, like a nuggety clearance midfielder that can drive the ball forward. Skills, decision making, those are probably the question marks on Sid Draper, but in terms of production, particularly at the end of the year. So here's another player like Foss, Vino Sullivan, who probably didn't have the best champs in terms of making a good account of himself because he's reportedly playing injured. Then end of the year in the sandfall. So like some of these other guys, particularly Jagger, he's proven an ability to play against mature bodies and perform really well. He's got that nice burst speed from stoppages as well. And I think, you know, compares pretty well to any player I've really mentioned here, maybe other than Sam Lawler. I do particularly like Sam Lawler. What are the odds of him going pick one? Very, very slim at this stage. It seems like uh, Richmond probably going to favor Victorian talent if it's considered relatively even. Is there a chance they have pick one and two and take Draper at two? It would be very unlikely, but I did want to show some love to Sid Draper. There's also Langford. Harvey Langford is an interesting one here. I don't expect him to be a realistic contender for pick one. And in fact, he could be towards the back end of the top Top 10, but he did really shoot into these top level calculations uh, during the championships where he won joint lark medalist with Leonardo Lombard. So he's a player I like. He's 190 centimeters. From what I can tell, one of those players that he's not particularly quick, but he does tend to find time for himself. And, you know, as much as he may not test well at the combine, I suspect that is what the doubt is on him. He's not necessarily a power athlete through explosive speed or whatever but he is continually well performed and another player who has had a taste of vfl with richmond so another connection there between richmond and one of these top end midfielders which to me speaks to this idea that they might trade six up to two to try and get two of them mind you at pick six you could still have your pick of harvey langford or josh smiley at this rate interestingly here from the age they say that some recruiters would be prepared to take him at number one so again probably a bit of a divisive player but again in quoting there are still queries on his speed and decision making at times particularly his kicking inside 50 but no argument with his output so again probably not a realistic contender for pick one but it is worth noting that a few recruiters said that they would be prepared to take him with pick one. So that's a massive wrap. So there you have it, guys. That is my summary of some of the top contenders for pick one. It certainly wouldn't come from a player outside this group. And like I said, we're really talking Sam Lawler, Finn O'Sullivan, Jagger Smith, or Levi Ashcroft. And I'd probably order it Lawler, most likely, my personal opinion. Finn O'Sullivan, maybe second. And given Brisbane and Richmond's trading relationship, I don't think they'll necessarily bid on Ashcroft to pick one. So he maybe comes in third or fourth, uh, it's hard to tell, but let's just say my prediction is Sam Lawler, but you may have a different opinion. So let me know in the comments if you've got a different take on these players, or perhaps if you've read something that is juicy that might give us some insight as to how it's going to play out. But for now, thanks for watching guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.